Okay. I have zero idea what's happening, if it's a hardware problem or a software problem. This is it. Last time, everything went crazy, and my phone shut down, and Facebook shut down, so I don't know. There's Liz, so I don't know what's going on here. If you can see me, or you know this picture, or you can hear anything, let me know. Weird, man. This is the third try, and I don't know what's happening. But what you're looking at, I know what you're looking at. Liz, I know you're hard at work. You're looking at the sanctuary of the Churchtown Church of God. This is where I work, people. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful job. Good morning. We've been doing all kinds of things here. Getting ready for the weekend. What are you doing on Sunday morning? What are you doing? You better be going to church. Hi, Jeff. Getting all psyched up. Psyched up, man. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to preach so much. I'm going to go horse over the next coming week. Oh, Liz, I pray for you all the time. I'll add specifically your sanity to the list. Now on Facebook, Jeff, your person contacted me and gave me some great tips. I really appreciate that. I want to learn how to do automatic greetings and automatic waves, those sorts of things when somebody chimes in. Because we, we are one step closer to the utilization. Hello, Mr. Mark. The utilization. I'm about that for a big word on a Friday morning. The utilization of the new hardware. Here's some old hardware. Do you guys see that? Do you know what's in my future today? Huh? Do you know what's in my future today? Vacuuming. Vacuuming this place that I love. Are you allowed to love a place? Because I just love this place. I just love this place. And this is, I mean, you talk about the greatest congregation in the world. Look what they got me. They got me this awesome, awesome, awesome vacuum cleaner. They got me a zero turn John Deere so I can mow. Don't you just love those people? And we got this Mevo. So last, this is what's happening. This is the latest on the Mevo. Good morning, Mr. Logan. And then we'll pray. There it is. We had um, an individual come last night. Uh, her name is Brady. Well, actually, her and her sister came. We have a new iPad that is dedicated to the Mevo. We have the Mevo. We have the, it hooked up to an Ethernet cable, but we found out that our Ethernet cable is too short. So we are very close to launching communications via Mevo. Very exciting. Good morning, Lord. How about we just take a moment and say, thank you, dear Jesus, for who you are. Thank you for what you have done for us. Oh, we love you and we appreciate you, Lord. We give ourselves to you this day as we give ourselves to you every day. Teach us, Lord. Let our lives be your vision and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Putting all of the pieces together, um, people are willing to be trained on, what am I saying? People are willing to be trained on Evo so that, you know, obviously I, I'm not doing it while I'm up here, that sort of thing. And I think that we're going to try right off the bat just the... Um, microphone on the Mevo, much like we use the microphone on the iPhone right now. Because from what I understand, a dedicated microphone, that's all the sound that you will hear. So again, Jeff, thank you. Your person contacted me and has already given me some great tips regarding how to do this. And um, so I, I would like to continue to stay in touch. We're not far away from the Mevo launch. Today I'm on the iPhone. And uh, we shall see how that goes. But 
It's been fun. I can't stick around for long. But thank you, Lord, for this day. And thank you for all these wonderful brothers and sisters. Amen. <laughs> Logan, you fire me up, Logan. You're doing good work, man. You fire me up. Right? You're like, eyes up, let's go. I know a lot of people like that. I know a lot of people like that. I tell you, I've been in a bit of spiritual turmoil lately. You can tell. Not necessarily bad stuff, right? I had a great conversation last night about this sort of bubbling up. You know when it's bad. But there, there a tension, a shift, a turmoil, a bubble, a stirring. I've been feeling that. I've been feeling that since the triennial. You know, and there's been a lot that has been racing through my head. Uh, there has been a lot of unsettled feeling about that experience. It's still not settled. And I, again, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but because it helps us find God's direction. It drives us into a place where we depend on Him. It drives us to a spiritual place where we realize that these are not physical feelings. This is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. And so what do we do with that? We treat it in the spiritual. And we, we go in prayer and we go in submission and we seek for discernment and we seek for knowledge. Right? That sort of stuff. And it, it, there's a, so there's a turbulence. We used that word last night in this conversation. And I like that word, a spiritual turbulence inside of me. I'm not settled right now, and I think it's a good thing. I'm not feeling great about everything. And I think that's a good thing. See what I'm saying? Um, I gotta go, I gotta, I've gotta move through this. I can't wait, Jeff, to see where the preaching goes and what happens over the course of the next week um, as we just invite God to just do what he does. And uh, I know, I know selfishly, I'm really looking forward to how he is going to speak to me through this, this time together um, as well. So there's, there's just something um, unsettling right now. And it's, again, not even a, a bad thing. There are, there are unsettling components about it. Direction, how thing, you know, all of that stuff. And, and like I said, that it's been, it's been happening throughout the summer and Triennial really laid it out there like, and just really began, okay, what is church? Who is church? What is, what are we doing? What are, this, all, all of this, blah, blah, blah. There's so much stuff. It's been very, very, very unsettling in my spirit. Very great turbulence. So, thank you. Um, I, my prayers have been, hey, Lord, you know, direct me. I, I, I'm feeling very settled, so to speak, on the scriptures, and I'm just bringing it. And um, we'll see what God has to say through his holy word. Um, but we're going to listen to the words of Jesus. We're going to listen to the words of Paul, and we're going to listen to the words of Peter. And, uh, um, you know, and, and there's some other things on my mind. So, so I believe, you know, it's, it's happening, right? It's happening. And, and we've talked at length about this. Good morning, Miss Brady. We've talked at length about this. The things that we are experiencing on a large scale globally, like human race stuff, and the things that I just mentioned, this unsettling, you know, spiritual turbulence, right, Brady? It is, it, there, it, what, how do, you know what I'm trying to say. There's a movement afoot. There's a change in the weather. This, Reality that we see as Christians involves the spiritual and the physical. It is an expanded worldview. And when we say, yes, Lord, take me where you want me to go. Yes, Lord, 
I am yours, I am willing, here I am, all of those things, he says, okay. And it can be very unsettling. It's kind of like ignorance is bliss. You keep your heart closed off, you keep your head closed off, and I think that this can happen as much inside the church as outside of the church, as much with believers as without believers. But you got your eyes closed, man. You got your heart closed. You're like, yep, worshiping God. Don't want to hear from him. Want to make sure I'm seen at church, but... Right? You know what I'm saying? Inside the church, outside the church, believers, non-believers, if you're not willing, if you're not truly willing, because then when you're truly willing and you get in it, you realize that it's the real deal. You become a part of God's army or however you would like to put it, and you get in there and you say, I am willing, and then you realize what it's all about, and all hell breaks loose in your life. And I'm not using that in any other term, but literally, all hell breaks loose in your life. And you're like, whoa. And you're like, and I'm like, yeah, whoa, this is it. This is the fight. This is the life. This is what it's about. Well, I don't want any of that. And many people say, I don't want any of that. And boom, they go back to either a blind Christian life or just, I, I'm, woo, no, I don't want any of that stuff out of Christianity altogether, that sort of thing. But this is what it is. It's not a game. It's not a game. The church is not a club. This is creation. This is how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It is who we are to be. And I will tell you <clears throat> that there is no better, safer, more exhilarating, more exciting place to ever be than in, the, in God's will, doing as He is directing you, regardless of circumstances and regardless of what you may be doing. We forget the callings of Scripture. Again, we talked about this. We, you know, I'm a bit... Uh, we forget the callings of Scripture. They're not the callings of Joel Olstein or whatever his name is. They are Brian. Yes, Lord, here I am, Lord. Will you do as I ask? Yes, Lord. Do you realize that it's not going to be easy? Uh, I am still willing, Lord. Do you realize people will not listen to you? I'm still willing, Lord. Do you realize you may die? I'm still willing, Lord. Do you realize that, right? Read the callings in Scripture and what individuals and prophets are called to. Look at the life that Paul, Paul led, remember? I mean, he, he reads off or he writes down that whole list. I've been shipwrecked, I've been beaten, I've been stoned, I've been jailed, I've been left for dead. How many times? Friday morning encouragement, right? My encouragement is this. It's awesome! It's the life. It's real life. Woo! That's what everybody got to say here this morning. Unsettling. We used the word turbulence last night. I love, you know, and it's true. And I've been trying to put my finger on it too, Liz. And I, there's so many events of this summer that have been unsettling. Lots of spiritual warfare, digging in the trenches, putting the dukes up, getting it done, getting it done, getting it done, and all of this stuff. And then, like I said, it, the, the, the conference was very unsettling. I left with no direction, let alone a well-specified direction. And I'm like, okay, I'm here, Lord. You know, okay, you've, 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 you've taken the puzzle. Sometimes this is, 
what I, how I describe a calling in your life or how the Lord works in your life. You've got this picture all put together, but it's really just like a jigsaw puzzle. The Lord comes in with his great right hand and shakes that, pu that puzzle up, all those puzzle pieces, and throws them up in the air. And you feel that. You're like, what's going on? And you got to trust that as he plucks them from the air and puts them down, he is recreating a brand new picture for you. You must trust that or you will go crazy or you will give it up. He's saying, trust me. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Yes, Lord, I trust you. I am willing. I am willing. I am willing. I am here. I am here. I am here. Right? And so when you're in that position, when you're in that place where some or all of your puzzle pieces have been tossed in the air, you're like, I've got the spiritual heebie-jeebies. I've got the spiritual undirections. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> it's not bad, though. That's what I'm saying. It's good. Man, I was relating. And yeah, that's just where I am. A positive, unsettling feeling. Right? Right? Those things are not mutually exclusive. We're using the metaphor that I just described. It's God. It's not negative. God says, I'm going to take your life and I'm going to absolutely ruin it and destroy you. And uh, No. But so this, this turbulence is good. If, if we trust him, if we trust him, if we trust him, if not, man, you're going to go into a corner and cower and be afraid. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Lean on me. No, that's a secular song, but I like that song. Leaning on the everlasting arms. There we go. I like that song, too. Yes, you do. Growth is uncomfortable. We, you know, we talk about John. Uh, 15 and the pruning of the of the vine and we're like we forget that that is an act of violence <laughs> right that can't feel be comfortable being pruned being cut being trimmed having things broken off being chiseled the potter and the clay all of those different things are you know significant actions they go Oh, baby. So here's what, here, let me put this out there. I've only got a, a few viewers, but that's cool. Other people will, in the comments section, because here's what I want to do. I'm behind on my programs for It's Still Good News Today. My fault. It's been one of those weeks, um, and I'm not going to lie. Wednesday, I just hit the wall, and I did other stuff. Um, so it is what it is. But anyway, so I've got to get these programs accomplished. And what I'm thinking is I'd like to do at least 10 programs of individual devotional pieces. So we have a passage of scripture and then a commentary, very classic devotional style, All right? I don't want to lead with commentary and try to back it up. You know me. I want to expose it. I want to expose right from the scriptures. So what are some of your favorite passages? I would love to examine, and I'm not talking just about Bible verses or your life verses or whatever, that sorts of things. What are some of your favorite stories? What's some of your, because I've got time. It doesn't have to be just a verse. What are some of your favorite passages that I can explore? I would love to do that. and and. If you leave those in the comments section and I can make my list and I can go in and I can read and pray and explore and then create these devotions for the radio. I just thought that would be a neat way of doing it. I can, I can come through, you know, and, and find 10 passages, but I thought, okay, all right, TOL. Some of your favorite passages, some of your favorite stories, Old Testament, New Testament, it can be a chapter long. You see what I'm saying? I've got a little, I've got a little bit of time. 
Think about that, pray about that, I got one already. List them in the comments section. I'd love to make that list because I'm thinking that the next thing that I do will be uh, some individual devotions, standalone type things, because I have been doing explorations of chapters and books of scripture, which has been fun. Like we did, I did the you know, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter five through seven, it took six weeks, it was fun. Um, I did Romans five through, uh, wait, yeah, five through eight. Um, I did first Peter or first John, you know, and so good stuff, good stuff. That's it. I wanted to check in with you all on Friday morning. Olivia is home. So that's going to be fun. It's fun having her home. She's home for a few days. We have a nice little um, shower uh, Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow morning, I'm on a ride at the Newville First Church of God, riding for a purpose. So from 10 a.m. until about 1 p.m. or so, I'll be riding there at the Newville First Church of God with my father-in-law. Shout out. It'll be fun. And then we have a wonderful shower for a neighbor. Uh, it's going to be like a reun uh, reunion of our old neighborhood to come together. Their daughter is now married and with child, and we're going to celebrate and hear everything here at the church. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and then, of course, Sunday morning, you know where to be. And so we're so looking forward to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. What does it mean to be a living sacrifice? What do we talk about a living sacrifice? That's something, that's one of those little points of theology that, that we kind of scoot right over when we talk about Jesus being the fulfillment of Old Testament. Not something new. Uh, Paul, especially in Romans, was just so big on saying this is not a new religion, this is not a new cult, he is not a new God. This is, look at this, this is the story, and he is the salvific pinnacle of that story. He is the promised Messiah. And so these words, living sacrifice, have so much meaning, because until then, all of the sacrifices had stayed dead. They had to be redone, because the Old Testament sacrifices stayed dead. It is a very, very poignant piece of theology that we don't bring out quite a bit. In Romans, when it says, make yourself a living sacrifice unto the Lord, right? Because he is a living sacrifice. He was sacrificed and he was dead, but he didn't stay dead. He is alive, and so it doesn't need to be done again. It was done. It is finished. And that is one of the huge points that say, look, this, again, Paul speaking into the Roman world, really saying, you know, this is not a new thing. It's not a new religion. It's not another God for your pantheon. This, look at this story. Let me tell you this story. And let me tell you how Jesus is the fulfillment of that story. Oh, yes, but wait, there's more to come too, right? But you know what I'm saying. He is a living sacrifice. How's that possible? It's possible only by the power of the creator. The creator and the giver and the sustainer of life. He was dead and now he's alive. We don't need to sacrifice animals anymore. God had taken it to this, the perfect level. And it was done for us. Just, oh, so amazing. So that's what I'm asking. I love it. Please keep the, your, some of your, and you, if you want to do more than one, but I'm looking for passages of scripture that I can turn into a daily devotion for the radio program, individual devotions. So what are some of your favorite passages of scripture? Oh yes, hi Larry, hi Dennis. 
Some things like that, again, when, are we, when we're teaching the depth and the breadth of Scripture, it doesn't necessarily mean you start at Genesis, well, I'm going to read every chapter of the Bible on Sunday mornings. It means that you're telling the story. It means that you're not telling your story and proof texting it with the Bible. It means that you're telling the story of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ the Lord in the context of the story of the Bible. So people understand the same things that Paul is trying to preach through Romans. It's God, man. It's the story of humanity and God. It's the story of salvation. It's the story of promises and promises fulfilled. It's the story of promises of things yet to come. It's the story, right? It's important that we know that and it's not just, yay, Jesus, right? Or, hey, I want to show, share with you. You guys know that you're awesome, amazing, fantastic, and wonderful. And you can have even more if you unlock the storehouses of heaven. Oh, man, come on. You see what I'm saying? It's the story, the story. And, and, and understanding those things is super important. Marx talks about followers. Follower of what? Follower of who? You don't want to turn Jesus into this cult figure. Jesus is God. And God completes his story. What? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So give me your scripture passages. Oh, I know, right? I'm looking at this. Now I'm looking at this. All right. Yeah, how about it, right? Morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. What would you like to talk about these last five minutes? Anybody need any prayer? How about we do that? Huh? Any prayer for this morning? It's going to be a busy day playing catch up today with everything, getting ready for the weekend um, for me. Or you can tell that I hope that you sense the spiritual energy and I hope that you have that as well. We talked about spiritual turbulence today a stirring, a movement, all of those things. But yet it's not a negative thing. Live in it. Walk in it. Walk through it. Lord, what are you doing? Maybe he has taken all of the puzzle pieces of your life and tossed them into the air. That's the scariest thing in the world. But it is the most glorious experience when you trust him and say, Lord, I... No idea what tomorrow is bringing, but I know you do and I trust you. And he's pulling those puzzle pieces down and he's making a new picture one at a time. Maybe he's just taken a few of those puzzle pieces and thrown them in the air. He's reconstructing a little piece over here, dealing with your family, dealing with your pastorate, dealing with your job, de dealing with your spiritual journey, your knowledge and wisdom of him, knowledge of him your intimacy with him, right? Let it happen, live in it. It's his direction. We have to be okay with that. We're like, I'm okay with you, Jesus, as long as you're doing exactly what I want. That's, hey, this is how I would behave if I were God, so therefore, I'm going to question God at every corner. Stop it. Stop it. How about, here I am, Lord. Are you willing? I am willing. 
And he'll even give you opportunities. He'll say, are you sure? I am willing. You see what I'm saying? There's no safer, more exhilarating, more exciting, more terrifying, more turbulent place you will ever be than in God's will. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's terrifying. It's scary. It's glorious. It's empowering. It is... Oh, it's life, man, and life to the full. It is your heart opening and being filled with everything that life has to offer because it is being given to you by the life-giving God. It is different. It, it is holy. It is weird. It is amazing. Live in it. Don't be afraid of Him. Don't be afraid of your God. Don't be afraid of God. I don't even like saying that your God or my God is so powerful that it indicates that they're... No. Don't be afraid of God. Don't be afraid of Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of God. That's my message for today. We're going to pray for John Lester. Leister. We're going to pray for John Leister. We're going to pray for Larry. All right, if you put the... I want you to, I'm going to ask you guys whether you're watching it now or whether you're watching it later. Please place in the comments section a prayer request if you want to. Know that you will be prayed over and be prayed for. And please place in the comments section a passage of scripture that it, you would like to have explored. That one of your favorites, a story of the Bible that is one of your favorites, a go to. You put more than one. I'm looking for ideas, um, and I just thought it would be neat to turn to you guys and see what the Lord brings. And then I'm going to have so much fun writing them down and then exploring them and then doing a devotion for the radio um, all about them. So, Father God, thank you so much for our time together today. Thank you so much for your church. The fellowship of believers bound together by the power of your Holy Spirit and... That's enough. Lord, we we'll pray for every brother and sister today as we move in your will. During this time of global spiritual turbulence, Lord, let us be in your will. Let us be submitted to you, your vision, your purpose, your power. Keep our eyes up and on you. And what you and you alone have done for us. We are so empowered. We are empowered by you. Lord, we pray for our brother Larry today and his ministry and his life and his spiritual well-being. His emotional well-being. Pray for Mr. Leister today, Father God, in his physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being as he moves through this process with these brain tumors. Pray for all of the friends and all of the family that are on our minds and on our hearts today and in our churches today and that are brought to us today as we pray together as one people, one church, brought together by one spirit with one vision, yours. We give ourselves to you today as individuals, Lord. We give ourselves to you today in unity as your church. Your voice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you guys. Um, thank you so much. And we should, uh, I'm thinking of next week. I should talk to you on Monday. It's going to be a crazy week next week. Like, this whole summer hasn't been. Take care, everybody. Amen. Pastor Dale Stoops and uh, Kennedy Valley. God bless you, Dale. May the God's Holy Spirit speak in you, right? And then through you.
Stay submitted, my brother. God bless.